After the victory in France, the dictator was at the peak of his powers. The people, it seemed, were behind him. Mass hysteria. Yet not everyone was swept along. The conspiracy was a lengthy affair. It kept on going wrong and having to be set up again. Or there would be a great new victory, so that you had to say, it's impossible to do away with him now. We couldn't have killed Adolf six weeks after the successful campaign in France. People just wouldn't have understood that. Im Mosaiksaal der neuen Reichskanzlei fand der feierliche Staatsakt für den verstorbenen Reichsjustizminister Dr. Gürtner statt. Freisler the careerist badly wanted to be Dr. Gürtner's successor, but a former Bolshevik, Hitler's reaction was negative. He needed Freisler for his dirty work for the people's court. Someone had to be the perpetrator. Just the job for Freisler. He was certainly capable of developing, but he kept strictly to the principle that anyone who wasn't for us must be against us, and therefore had to be got rid of. Placed into protective custody, into safekeeping, in a concentration camp. Nazi justice made people disappear. And it only needed a suspicion of guilt. That, of course, was one of the main reasons for the dreadful developments. The fact that the National Socialists perverted the course of justice to suit their purposes. To take a notable case, there was the so-called treachery law. Under this law, they could do anything they felt like doing. It was so elastic and flexible that anyone accused under it was doomed, if that was what the court wanted. like the Jews, doomed since they'd been stripped of their rights. Anyone still living there was in great danger. Nineteen forty two, a villa on the Wannsee Lake in Berlin. a secret retreat for the engineers of the final solution. Among them was Roland Freisler, the lawyer, the anti-Semite, the bloody judge. Murdering the law, murdering justice, murdering humanity. If your views are such that you can say Negroes are half monkey, that the Jews must be killed, that the Slavs are subhuman, then that's outrageous and you can't begin to build a creditable legal system. With views like that, totally without morality or ethics, you can't begin to expect stability or peace. Injustice every time. The People's Assembly had long since lost any rights. Enemy news was highly dangerous. There were some things that should fall on deaf ears. Hand aufs Herz. 
Waren nicht sogar Sie bereits von diesem Gift angefressen? We used to listen to the BBC from London and Luxembourg, but of course we were careful that the windows and doors were tightly shut and we could hear properly when there wasn't radio interference, because there was often interference on the BBC broadcast deliberately by the Nazis. You could receive the death penalty or at least imprisonment for listening in. Anyone who appeared before Freisler in this room was totally without protection. Then the German said, it's no laughing matter. If we condemn you to death here now, you will be executed at three o'clock this afternoon. This is a serious business. You've heard what the public prosecutor said. Then he left the prosecution bench and went over to the judge's bench, and I thought, what's happening now? Am I at last standing before an honest judge? Just try to imagine. Shivers ran up and down my spine. Those who didn't confess were tortured. The Gestapo called it intensive interrogation. I was interrogated 77 times, and only on two occasions was I not beaten up. I got a suit of my husband's back, and it was completely soaked in blood. I knew I would be beaten up, and whatever else. But I didn't imagine that they'd pull out my nails, as they did with others. Such was the way of Nazi justice. Only those who confessed or pretended to be ignorant could hope to get a pardon. I had a very clever lawyer, but I didn't know that in advance. A friend of ours had found him for us, and he conducted everything, psychologically speaking, in a very skillful way, describing me as a poor Aryan girl who had been seduced by a wicked Jewish boy. Can you imagine? That was the tone of the proceedings. In Namen des deutschen Volkes, das Wilhelm Kübert, bewusst die Verräter unterstützt, lässt sich nicht zur Gewissheit erhärten. Ebenso wenig, dass er zersetzende Äußerungen in der Wehrmacht pflichtwidrig nicht gemeldet hätte. Er wird deshalb von diesen Vorwürfen freigesprochen. But acquittal didn't always imply freedom. And while the judgment was being read out, someone came up from behind. I couldn't see who it was. I could only see that he was wearing civilian clothes, and he whispered in my ear, it doesn't matter what happens here and what they decide. You'll be taken to a concentration camp. Stalingrad, the beginning of the end. Stalingrad was certainly the turning point, and that was noticed by the population. So the courts had to adjust to make sure that a feeling of terror was spread around. Terror to set. A few dared defy the system of justice. Students in Munich called for resistance, circulating pamphlets which openly tried to present the truth. It was almost like a premonition. 